Okay, we are back. Street Certified Podcast. We are live at the IMS Independent Music Seminar. It's your boy, Embrace El Papo. You can follow us at Street Certified News on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. And we are here with the wonderful, I'm trying to think of a, of a title, wonderful, how about just, powerful, how about just my name? How about just, yeah, how about just my name? Miss yeah, Dev Just my name. How's it going? Right there. How I'm you sorry. doing? I'm great. You doing great? Mm-hmm. So first, first, I just want to kind of go back. How did you start Mazay Entertainment? When I was coming up, that was a that was a powerful name. Like we didn't even know that was your company that I heard Mazay. So Mazay started out from David Bannon and Ludacris. Um, I had worked for Fulton County in Atlanta. And you had to address everybody by their last name. So they couldn't pronounce my last name. So Chris used to always call me, well, it was Chris Lover Lover at that time. Right. And he used to, he started calling me Miss A. It was Miss A. Uh, David Banner really couldn't say my name because I was like working with both of them with their nonprofits. And they was both calling me Miss A. So one day I was sitting there, I said, okay, I have to build my company. Like, I have to get ready to build my company when I decided to walk away and to go full-fledged in with Gooch at that right. time. But I needed to build my company, and I wanted to know what would I name it. Well, those are my two favorite guys right there. Like, I love them two guys. Right. And I kept saying, because they caught me Miss A. But it couldn't just be a Miss A. It had to be something like I would pick up the phone and say, Good morning, thanks for calling Miss A. And then I was like, no, it had to have a little twist to it. And that's where Ms. Zay came from. Okay. And that it just, little bonic A, the A Y, it sounds like the A, and it just came here. So it had to sound good to say, Good morning, thanks for calling Ms. A Entertainment. Oh man, that sounds like, that sounds yeah, real good. Yeah. So when you repeat the name back out and you say it, you always look at it because I wanted it to be like this corporate saying, or it would be big and not ghetto. Right. Even though it was a little like, the A was at the back of it right. was like a little ebonic way yeah, but yeah. still in all that Miz but the M-I-Z not M-I-Z-Z but just M-I-Z A-Y there you go yeah it came out it came out it sounded like yeah. it was a big company to me but I was growing up nobody ever knew who I was right so um that happened when you was in Atlanta you were already in Atlanta mm-hmm. so tell me about like you originally from New York right I had simply music in New York what was it called? Simply Music. Okay. It was so crazy. So I had, um, I think, I think Bo Legged Lou introduced me to her. This one female artist, I loved her. She could sing so good. And um, I had a female artist. I had a couple of people, you know. And I used to be at Soul Convention all the time, you know, with Corey Rooney and up there and working with different people. So it was like Simply Music was it back then. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the same? Bow like a Isn't that the same? Didn't he find... Uh, right. Didn't he find Nikki? Actually, the original... See, and that's so ill that you just said this. Yeah. That's what a lot of people don't know. The real person that had her first was Full Force. Yeah. And her, Safari, and his son, they were all a group. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't know. Safari was an artist. Right. So... It was them three. Did you? Is that how you met Nikki? No, nope, I didn't meet Nikki that way. So it's through Fendi. It was through. Actually, it was through. Yeah, it was through. Well, Fendi actually gave me a CD, and everybody knew. I kept saying, "I want a female. I want a female." I kept having these hard-headed guys, and all the guys was coming to me. But it also goes with me loving girls, like more right. daughters and stuff. And I said, "I want a female artist," but she got da 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 all these different things. And we have Gooch happened to be doing a show. We was doing a uh, show with um, Cash Money in them at that time with Wayne and them. And um, finished that. Deb, I got just the right one for you. I said, man, get off my face. I ain't trying to hear you with this stuff. And he said, I'm telling you, Deb, she hot. I said, mm hmm. He said, take the CD. I took it. But I was listening to this CD on the way going back to Georgia when we was driving I was like holy shit and I remember I was going I said yo what she look like right and you know he sent something over at that time and, and then I looked her up and I was just looking at her and I just started watching her but the biggest thing that got me she was from Queens she was from Southside Jamaica Queens Queens stand up that was everything for me right there but I didn't really run to it right then and there. And when we did the show in Beemore, we was in Baltimore, we had that show. And they actually could my artist stay on longer because Wayne and it was late. 
So Gooch and so I see boys, everybody was up there just like just tearing it up. We was going out to hurry up to get up out of there because we had another show. And Nikki was coming through with another female and she said something. It was like, that's her right there. Gooch was like, Auntie, that's her. I was like, nigga, come on, leave them girls alone and let's go. And I looked, I said, yo, what's up? And I just kept going, but I didn't go there. One of my security happened to have been married to her cousin. Okay. And that's really how it happened. Nikki was in North Carolina and she was stranded. And that's how I got to talk to her on the phone and I sent for her. Okay. And she came to Atlanta and she told me everything she wanted. I said, listen, I don't mind representing you and working with you, but you got to come to Atlanta. I'm not going to New York. You're not going to New York. And that's how that story started. So when you left New York, you just, you said you was done. Well, I was, well when I left New York, I had no intentions on ever doing music again. Okay. I didn't want to do anything with it. You know, at that time, watching what Kelly Price was going through, it was like real painful watching all the stuff that they was going through and how they were stabbing people so hard in it. Like once I was in there with higher up people and seeing what was really happening, Oh, this wasn't for me. It kind of like turned. It kind of turned me off yeah. the way it was. And I was like, I don't want nothing to do with this no more. So when I went to Atlanta, I went doing what I do, child protective services. I went on back in and went to work. And it wasn't until when Goose came home and he called me. And it really wasn't even that. It was somebody that was working in Big Cat came to me and said, help him with community service because I did a lot of nonprofit right. stuff. But he called me every morning at the crack of dawn. And he was like, let me take you to breakfast. Let me do this. And I was like, well, what do you need to do? So everything I was thinking about was community service. Right. And he said, I need you. And I said, oh, I ain't got time for all that. Like, you know, let me help you. And you can come do this stuff. And she talked to me and she said, look, he really, really needs some help. He did da, da, da. He did this. And then somebody called me and said, if you F with him, we'll never deal with you again. And my niece Tiffany looked at me. She said, Aunt Debbie, you don't let nobody tell you no stuff like that. Do it. And I looked at her. I said, you think I, you really think I should? She said, do it, Aunt Debbie, because you don't let people tell you what to do. I said, bet. Is on. Right. So let me show you because he was blackballed. Mm -hmm. It's like with the So Icy record and the stuff and all the stuff and that was going on. With Jeezy and what was going on with Jeezy, he was still. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and that's how that started. So, how did that go? Like, how was it like when you first like jumped in? Like, let me let me explain something to you. And contrary to whatever people say, I wouldn't trade those moments in for nothing in the world. When I tell you that he also became the fifth element because that's at that time is when I lost my first son. I had recently lost my first son. Gucci filled the void not only with me but with my sons. So I don't have negative things to say. I would never change that for nothing in the world. You understand what I'm saying? I would forever love. Nikki changed it for me for, for women. When I watched how hard that girl that girl worked hard. I mean, we can have knockdown drag outs, but then when she went on that stage and then she went on that interview, you would never know nothing was going on. She worked. She didn't allow nothing to stop her nor interfere with anything it is that she was doing. That's why with women, it's hard for me now. She set that bar high. Right. Regardless of what people say, her, you know, when people talk about, oh, she's so nasty, she's so this, but y'all think about, y'all ragged that girl. You ragged her. And she paid a lot of homage to a lot of people. I'm a lot of people, but I'm not a hater to women. Right. That I'm not, and I'm not going to stand for that period. We do know hating, but she paid a lot of homage. How much homage she, people wanted her to pay, I don't know. Right. But she did pay a lot of harm. Right, so it's like she paid her dues so she deserved her spot. Even for now, like I hate the fact that like the they bring Cardi her and Nikki and Cardi together. Yeah. Well, they're two different people. Nikki and Cardi are not the same right, artist. Right. So for people to bring them two against each other, I think it's horrible. I, I was more angry with Nikki for feeding in. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have a reason to feed in. Right. That platform, that bar you set is so high. Right. If anything, you uplift her. That's how this is supposed to be. I don't respect the female out there in hip hop right now because I ain't seen one bring another one up. So in my days, even though you had the Queen of Teeth and the MC Lights and all of these women, they battled, but they all performed and supported. You can't even go to a concert with a bunch of women on the stage. Right, they don't have without to. It, there's not going to happen because the ego tripping and the way that they all are, they're just selfish. It's I don't know what. So right now, I don't respect none of them. 
because you're not coming back and uplifting anybody else that was out there. People forget so quickly where they come from right. and what you did to get to where you are. So now it's your job. See, if I was one of them and I was an artist, I'm going to always make sure I'm going to be relevant. Outside of me selling and doing all the things that I do, I'm going to bring some people up because guess what's going to happen? I ain't never dying. Right. That's because gonna be every time you. you turn around, I'm going to bring somebody else up and put them back in. Yeah. Betty Wright still do records with people. Who? Betty Wright, the cleanup woman. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You know, who was the first? Let me ask you a question and see how good you are okay. since you're street certified. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Ma'am. Who was your first hip hop group in the game? Me. Females. 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 Who's that? Who's that? JJ Fat? Is that right? Who's JJ Fat? It's not JJ Fat. Who's that? They're from they're from Cali, right? Who are they? It was a group working with Dre and them back in the day. That was like what eighty four or something like that. I don't know. Oh, this is way before this that. Before that, I'm talking about the beginning. The beginning. Let's talk about that. You got me. You got me. Who was hmm? it? Why don't you take this and put this in your book of lessons? Okay. Sequence. Sequence. Guess who sequence was? Who, 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 who was sequence? I don't know. Liz, you got me. You interviewing me Angie, now. Angie Stone. Huh? Angie Stone. Angie Stone. Angie Stone. Do your homework. You see, the way people tell this game right now, there's not a lot of truth in a lot of this stuff. Right. They fabricate and, and they actually omit people out. I did not, I thought Do you not understand how that woman hurts? That she's not acknowledged for what she's done? When she closed her eyes, everybody will talk about it. Right. She'll be somebody. Right? Wow. But I see, that's that. why I keep telling people that they get into stuff and don't know what they're getting into. So you have to understand the originators and where this stuff comes from. You think that they don't feel bad? Yeah. I mean, and that's why this is so important how we wash each other away so quickly. We have so many negative things to say. When I hear a kid want to tell me something about a game you don't know nothing about. You don't know where it's originated from. You think about hip hop. See, in my days, they didn't worship rappers or or singers. Those wasn't the people. The people that you idolized was the drug dealers right, and the, the people in the street. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They governed those laws. Right. They did. And now when these kids came about and people came about and the stories was petitiously told because people came into our circle and start telling our story. Well, it's no different. The other day, I was with Jamie Foster Brown celebrating her birthday, you know, sister to sister. I've heard of that. Yeah. I met Bama, which is James Brown's daughter. Okay. Oh, my God. I was lit up. As a little kid. I was like six years old, going to that man's house and knocking on his door, getting a button saying, say it loud, I'm black and proud. Oh my God, that was everything in the world, which might not be nothing to you, but in my time, it was huge. Right. And Count Basie's daughter chasing us, and, and we, we used to tease her, we was bad. But, you know, Count Basie's daughter used to tease But this is history of people that paved ways for all of us. Not just you, but for me. All of us, they did stuff. And, and Reverend Jackson and what he's doing, but yet people don't respect none of these people. And they look at these people like they old heads and they ain't nobody and you can't do that. You can't tell me. To. See, when I was young and older women used to tell me the times, I said, oh, ass telling me that. I ain't going through that. I done been through that and more because I didn't want to listen. But the good thing is that I always had a book of lessons. Always. So you just gave me one for my book. Yeah, listen, you gotta be if you're gonna be street certified, you gotta know the game. Oh yeah, we street certified. So if you <laughs> I just stamped you with one thing. So that means you gotta take out a pencil and pad and start taking notes. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? And that's just real. You have to learn your history and where you come from. You can't allow people to just tell you a story that you don't know anything about. But then also